So in this section we're going to be solving polynomial equations and we have a little bit of experience with this but just with the ones that are in x squared, just the quadratic ones. We've done the quadratic formula and completing the square and solving by factoring. Um, what we're going to be doing is still factoring stuff, however we're going to be kind of upping the game a little bit and working on some x cubes and x to the fourths and things like that. So we've got these patterns that we need to talk about first. This is called the sum and difference of cubes and these are factoring patterns patterns that, yes, you are going to have to memorize, so you might as well get used to it right now. So the sum and difference of cubes. So we've got a cubed plus b cubed. If something is set up in that form, something cubed plus something cubed, here's how it gets factored. We have just the a plus b. So if this is x cubed plus y cubed, the first term is just an x plus y. Then we have a trinomial. What we do is we take this first term and we square it. And then since this is addition, we switch to subtraction. Then we multiply these two together, a times b, and then we add this thing squared. Okay, and then that's the pattern. And the pattern is the exact opposite for the next one. You do a minus b, then you take this first term and you square it. Then since this is subtraction, you su switch to addition, multiply these two together, and then add this term squared. Okay, so one quick thing that will help you to remember these is the mnemonic device SOAP. It stands for same, opposite, always positive, and it will help you remember the signs right here. So for same, opposite, always positive. So the same as this one, the opposite of this one, this is always positive, same thing down here. Same as this one, opposite of this one, always positive. Okay, quick definition, since we're talking about factoring, we do have to keep in mind that it's possible that we could have some prime polynomials. Prime polynomials, just like prime numbers, are polynomials that cannot be factored. polynomials that cannot be factored. Now, that doesn't mean that you just get to decide that things are prime just because you don't feel like factoring them. Make sure that you're keeping an eye out for any sort of patterns. So this first example, we are going to get a little bit of practice factoring some of these down. So here's how this one works. First, what we're going to do with part A, example one, part A, is we're going to look for GCFs. Every single time that you factor, you want to start off by looking for a GCF. So if you look between these two terms, first of all, they definitely both have a 5, so we're going to be able to factor a 5 out. They both have a single copy of y that we can factor out. And then let's see what's left. When we factor out a 5y here, we are left with three copies of y, a y cubed. And then minus, when we divide 320 by y, we will be left with 64. And then there is a z cubed. Okay, so we are going to follow this pattern, and we are going to factor it down using the difference of cubes. a cubed is in the place of y cubed, b cubed, is subbed in for by 64z cubed. So let's rewrite this one time just so we can figure out how this matches with the pattern. So y cubed, if we're trying to figure out what a is, it's a pretty easy match. y cubed is just y cubed. And then for 64z cubed, we're trying to figure out what b is. It's like, what did we cube in order to get 64z cubed? Well, that would be a 4z. We took a 4z and we cubed it. So we cubed the 4, we got 64, we cubed the z and we got z cubed. So this way, every single time we see an a in this pattern, we're going to sub it out with a y. Every single time we see a b in this pattern, we're going to sub it out with a 4z. So let's rewrite that. So don't forget about your 5y that's going to be there the whole time. Then I have a minus b. So that means y minus 4z. Okay, that's my binomial. Then onto the trinomial, I take a and I square it, which means I take y and I square it. Since this is subtraction, I switch to addition. Then I multiply a times b, so the stuff inside the parentheses. I'm going to multiply y times 4z. I'm going to get 4yz, and then plus this quantity squared, 4z quantity squared. So 4z times 4z gives me a 16z squared. All right, and that is your final answer. This thing is factored down as much as we possibly can. Now, I realize it looks a lot more complicated this way rather than this way, but we would use that for solving, which we will get to in just a couple of problems. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to start with the GCF. And so the GCF that we can take out um, is really actually just a 2. They both have a 2 in common. 
So we can take out a, let's take out a negative 2, just to make things a little bit cleaner. Let's take out a negative 2, and then notice that both of them have a W. So in parentheses, let's write what we've got left when we factor out a negative 2. So here I've got a positive 27. Negative 54 divided out a negative 2 leaves me with positive 27. And when I remove one of the factors of W, I still have 3 left. When I factor out a negative 2 from negative 250, I am left with a positive 125. And then when I factor out the W, I still have three factors of Z. So that's my first step. So now I'm at the point where I have the sum of cubes. This is a cubic, a perfect cube. This is a perfect cube right here. So I'm going to do just what I did in this step. I'm going to rewrite it so I can see what thing I cubed. So don't forget about your negative 2W. It's going to be there the whole time. And then here, 27. What do I cube to get 27? That would be 3. And then what do I cube to get W cubed? That would be W. So if I take the quantity 3W and I cube it, I get this. Then plus, what do I cube to get 125? That would be a 5. And then what do I cube to get z cubed? That would be z. So this is 5z times 5d, 5z times 5z. It gives me 125z cubed. So now I'm just going to fit it with this pattern right here. Every time I see an a, I'm going to replace it with a 3w. Every time I see a b, I'm going to replace it with 5z. So once again, do not forget that your negative 2w is there. I start with my binomial, just a plus b. So a is being replaced by 3w plus b, which is being replaced by a 5z. Then my trinomial, a squared. So I'm going to take this quantity right here and multiply it by itself. 3w times 3w gives me 9w squared. Since this is addition, we switch to subtraction. Then I multiply the two together. So I multiply 3w times 5z. So 3 times 5, of course, gives us 15. I have a w and a z. Then finally I add b squared, so I take this quantity right here and square it. 5 times 5 is 25, z times z is z squared. So that is as far as I can factor it, which like I said before, looks more complicated this way, but it's actually going to make the next step, the solving part, a lot easier. So here are some factoring techniques. Some of them we've talked about, some of them we haven't. We've talked about doing a GCF, it's a very, very important first step. When there are two terms, we have a number of things that we could do here. The difference of squares we already knew. These two are brand new. You're going to have to memorize these. When you have three terms, we've talked about how to do these general trinomials. And then we talked about how anytime you see four, we're going to factor by grouping. All right, so just a nice little handy chart that you can keep with you while you're factoring. Okay, we're going to use those tips that we just had in that uh, little chart to do some factoring. So these ones are going to be factoring by grouping because like we said anytime you see more than four terms you're going to factor by grouping. So we're going to start these off by grouping them up in, let's do groups of three. We'll group these together. So you want to always want to cut it into two groups. So we'll group these three together, we'll group these three together, see how it goes. Start by factoring on a GCF. So in this group that I've got underlined right here, start with the numbers. First of all they're all multiples of six and then they all have an X. So when I factor out a 6x, let's see what that gives me. Factor out a 6, I'm left with 5. Take out the x, I have just an a. Next term, negative 24 divided by 6 is negative 4. When I factor out the x, I'm left with a b. And then 6cx, the only thing I have left is that c. Okay, next. If we look at all three of these terms here, first of all, remember with factoring by grouping, you need this to match. So if we want this first term to be a positive 5a, we do need to take out a negative. And then all three of them, notice here, have a y squared. So we can factor out a y squared, and then we're going to write the leftovers in parentheses. So take out a negative y squared, and I'll be left with a positive 5a. Here, take out a negative y squared. I'll be left with a negative 4b. Take out a negative y squared, and I'll be left just with the c. Okay, so that's my first step. Now notice, like I said, the terms inside the parentheses are identical. That better happen, otherwise you did this process wrong. So now we're going to take that GCF, factor that out. Okay, so we're going to factor out the GCF, the 5a minus 4b plus c, and then in parentheses we'll write our leftovers. So once we take away that GCF, our leftovers are 6x minus y squared. Okay, and so that is your final answer. It's factored down completely and ready to solve. Okay, so let's do this one more time. Group these two, group these two. The GCF here, um, 
none of them are actually multiples of anything. So this one, um, 13, 18, and 15 don't share anything in common. And AX, BZ, BY don't have anything in common. So really isn't anything I can factor out there. Let's look over here. Um, no numbers in common. Nothing that all three of these have in common. And so if there's nothing that you can do, what we do is we say that this polynomial is prime. There's nothing that we can factor at all, and so that's our final answer. It means it's a polynomial that cannot be factored down. All right, so um, a quick note here. Factoring by grouping is the only thing that we can do if you've got four or more terms. There's no other method possible. Okay. Example three. We're going to factor these polynomials down. So a to the sixth plus b to the sixth. So let's let's practice going back to that handy little chart that we've got. a to the sixth plus b to the sixth. There are two terms. So if we go back to two terms, we've got three different possibilities. Now we know it's not the difference of squares because it's not a difference. It might be the sum of cubes, and it can't be the difference of two cubes because it's not a difference. Again, only this one has addition, so it's got to be the sum of two cubes. So back to this one. It's got to be the sum of two cubes, so we've got to be able to write it as something cubed plus something cubed. Well, what do I cube to get a to the sixth? That would be a squared. If I take a squared and multiply it by itself three times, I get a to the sixth. And then same thing with b to the sixth. That would be b squared to the third. Alright, so to factor this down, I'm going to follow my pattern. So first, I just drop the cubes. I just take this thing plus this thing. Okay, and then next what I do is I take this thing in parentheses and I square it. So a squared squared gives me a to the fourth. And then because this is addition, I switch to subtraction. Then I multiply these two things together. a squared times b squared. Then I take this thing and I square it. So b to the fourth. Whenever you're factoring, you always want to see if you can take anything down any further. So this thing right here, there's nothing that I can do to factor that down. And then this is a trinomial. There's actually nothing I can do to factor this down either. So that is your final answer. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The next one, we've got tons and tons of terms. And so this little thing that we just wrote down here is that factoring by grouping is your only possibility when you've got that many terms. So we have six terms. Okay, so in order to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to group them up. So group up to find a GCF. So let's group these three together. Let's group these three together. So looking just at each group, we want to factor out a GCF. So looking at this group right here, they all have three copies of x. So I can factor out an x cubed. Then in parentheses, I have an x squared left. I have a 4x. And then I have just a 4. Okay, and then in this next term, all three of these have a y cubed. So I can factor out a y cubed. And then I have an x squared, I have a 4x, and I have a 4. Okay, so remember, this part should happen. I should have the exact same thing in parentheses. Okay, so what I do is I take out that GCF, that common term. So whatever the parentheses are, whatever that common term is, you factor that out first, and then you write your leftovers in parentheses. So once we factor these terms out, we have an x cubed plus y cubed left over. And like I said with the last one, if you can take this down any farther, you need to keep factoring it down farther and farther. So this term on the left, this is a nice, neat trinomial. It actually does factor down. So I can factor it down to x and x. Now I want to figure out what multiplies to 4 and adds to 4. And that would be a positive 2 and a positive 2. So this term right here factors down like this. Now this is the sum of cubes. And so I write just the two expressions without the cubes first. Then I have a trinomial. So I take this first term and I square it. Then since this is addition, I switch to subtraction. I take the two terms and I multiply them, x times y. And then I take the last term and I square it, y squared. OK, so that is as far as I can take that one. If you wanted, you could write an x plus 2 squared like in parentheses. But I think it's pretty much just fine to leave it like this. OK. So now, second step, we've practiced all of these factoring techniques. We're going to move on to solving polynomial equations. So the last form, the last little technique that we're going to use is something called quadratic form. And what quadratic form is, it's something that kind of looks an awful lot like quadratic form. Okay, so an expression that is in quadratic form. So let's say an expression in quadratic form can be written
a u squared plus b u plus c where u is some expression involving x. So that u part is some expression involving x. Okay, so let's practice. So we want to write these down. So write each expression in quadratic form if possible. So this thing right here, x to the fourth plus 5x plus 6. We want to see if it's possible to write this thing as something squared. So that seems possible. Okay, I could write this as x squared squared. But then since this is an x squared, this next term right here would have to be an x squared. Because whatever you've got squared, you have to have that exact same term right here. Like this is a u squared, this has to be a u. So if this is an x squared squared, this would have to be an x squared. So this is not in quadratic form. Okay, so that one we cannot get down to quadratic form. So you just say that it's impossible. It cannot be written in quadratic form. Okay, let's look at another one. This one, 8x to the fourth plus 12x squared plus 18. All right, so let's write this out. So if we are trying to figure out what quantity can get squared, we can take the x to the fourth and we can write it as x squared squared. Okay, then that would mean I'd have to have an x squared right here, which I do. Okay, so now that is quadratic form. So this is kind of like the u squared, and then this is like the u. Okay, let's do just a couple quick problems here. Solve the following equations by using quadratic form. Okay, so if I'm trying to figure out how to write something in quadratic form, let's write this down so I can figure out what exactly my substitution should be. So this thing right here. This is an x to the fourth, and this is an x squared. So I know that I can write that in quadratic form. Okay, so let's write this down. So 4x to the fourth, I can actually go a step further and I can write this as 2x, or 2x squared, squared. So I can do 2x squared times 2x squared and that's 4x to the fourth. And then minus, if I wanna have a 2x squared in parentheses here, that means that I have a four on the outside. Okay, and then plus three, equals zero. Okay, so I am, I don't know why I left that little room right there. Sorry about that. Um, so let's rewrite this. We're going to make what we call a u substitution. So instead of 2x squared, we're going to write u squared and then minus 4 times u plus 3 equals zero. Okay, so now that thing that I have right there, I can factor it down. So u squared minus 4u plus 3. So we can write this in parentheses. So u and u equals zero. So I want to see what's going to multiply to positive three and add to negative four and that would be a negative three and a negative one. Okay, so I can take these two and I can set them equal to zero. So I'm going to take the u minus three and I'm going to set it equal to zero. So that's going to get me u equals three. And then I can take the u minus one and I'm going to set that equal to zero. So that gets me u equals one. Okay, so I can substitute these back in now, because remember, I'm not solving for u, I'm trying to solve for x. So I replace that x term. So instead of u, I'm going to replace it with a 2x squared. And then same thing over here, instead of u, I'm going to replace it with a 2x squared. And then I need to do whatever algebra I need to do to get the x by itself. So here I need to divide by 2. I'm going to do that with both of these expressions. So here I have an x squared equals 3 halves. And then here I have x squared equals 1 half. And then for my last step, I'm going to take the square root. Don't forget when I square root things like this, I need to take a plus or minus. So I have x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. And then I also have x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 half. So those are my two answers for part A. All right, so I've got just one more of these to do. So this one, I've got that same thing, that quadratic expression there that I can write down. So 8x to the fourth, I'm going to put in, let's see, looks like just the x to the fourth that I can do. So x to the fourth, I'm going to write this as 8, and then, no, I can take a 2. So I can write 2x squared 
squared, and I know that gives me 4x to the 4th, so if I just put a 2 out front, I'll be good. And then plus, if I take out a 5, then I can put a 2x squared in parentheses, and then minus 12 equals 0. Okay, so let's cut these off here. There we go. Okay, so let's simplify this down. We're going to make a substitution for u, and it's going to be the same substitution I had up here. So now we're going to write this as 2u squared plus 5 times u minus 12 equals 0. All right, so this thing right here, because I have the 2u squared, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So let's start by multiplying these outside two terms together. I multiply 2 times negative 12, and I get negative 24. And now I'm trying to figure out what can multiply to negative 24 and add to positive 5. And that would be a positive 8 and a negative 3. So remember, I can use that to expand out my middle term. Okay, and then since I have four terms, I'm going to factor by grouping. So I group these two together, I group these two together. So 2u squared and 8u both share a 2u in common. And then I have a u plus 4 in parentheses. And then the negative 3u and the negative 12 have a negative 3 in common. And then again, when I factor the negative 3 out, I'm left with a u plus 4. Anytime that you're factoring by grouping, that expression that you're left with in parentheses should be exactly the same. Otherwise, you may have done something wrong. So my common term is that u plus 4, and then your leftovers are, remember, what you have when you factor out that GCF. So I have a 2u minus 3. Then I set that equal to 0. So second to last step here, I'm going to take the u plus 4 and set it equal to 0. Then I'm going to take the 2u minus 3 and set it equal to 0. And so here I get a negative 4 for u. Here I add 3 and divide by 2. And so I end up with three halves for u. Very last thing, just like I did up above, we're not solving for u because our problem had nothing to do with u. We're going to solve for x. So we're going to replace the u with the 2x squared, just like we did right here. And then we're going to replace this u with the 2x squared. And then do whatever algebra we need to do to get the x by itself. So here I'm going to divide by a negative 2. I'm sorry, a positive 2. So I get x squared equals negative 2. Then I take the square root, and so I end up with x equals plus or minus. Now, because I have a negative under the square root, I can take out an i, and then the square root of 2 doesn't simplify. So plus or minus i root 2. And then over here, when I divide by 2, it's really like multiplying by 1 half. So I get x squared equals 3 over 4. Then I can take the square root of both sides. So x equals, I have plus or minus. The square root of 3 doesn't simplify, so I just write it as the square root of 3. And then the square root of 4 is 2. So these are my final answers here. All right, so that's it.